Hi everyone, it's Miss Danielle here at Poracy Park, here to do some science again. Um, today we're going to be doing some science with rocks, specifically minerals, and we'll talk a mo in a moment about what the difference is. Um, so to play along today, you'll need a rock of some sort. Uh, if you found it in your yard, or if you know what it is, or if you don't know what it is, um, we're going to do some experiments on our rock. You need a penny, not any coin, a penny. Specifically, we need something that's copper. Um, if you had a piece of copper tubing, I guess that would work too. You need a steel nail or file, and that same old gl glass jar, um, if you've kept it the past few days. We're going to be using the glass jar as well. I'm going to give you a few moments to go find your rock collection, if you don't have it already. Um, and I'll say a few other things, and then we'll get to the science. This science is being presented as part of Middletown Month instead of Middletown Day. We had a whole month of virtual and in-person challenges. We're doing some in-person in sports challenges. This week was pitch, hit, and run, and today are, is your last chance to get out there and try and knock some people off the leaderboard. We're also selling Middletown Day bags instead of like a Middletown Day where you have to walk around and get all the stuff from the sponsors. We have a bag that is pre-filled with swag from the sponsors. Uh, Middletown Pediatric Dentist gave some hand sanitizer. And they also have, besides the bag itself, a township fleece blanket. Um, so these bags are $5. They come with some coupons. And the proceeds of selling the bags go to the charity that the mayor has chosen, Infinite Love for Kids Fighting Cancer. So you can buy them at Poracy Park, $5, cash or check. And you'll probably see me here. Um, my co-host is Mr. John. Say hi, John. Hello. And if you've not done WebEx before, then you can type any questions you have in the chat, um, and he'll make sure that those get to me. Do my best. And I think that takes care of the business end, so hopefully everybody's back with their rocks. And I'm actually going to start not with my rock, but with a little minimal experiment. So this is um, a fast-growing crystal kit that will make a little colorful mineral tree. Is it going to be a Christmas tree? Um, if you have one of those, like, 60s pink trees or blue trees, it's not going to be bright green. Okay. So the instructions say that we need, I forgot, a stewing container. We'll use our, jar for our other beaker from the other day. We need five milliliters of water. So I have a little syringe here that can pull me up exactly five milliliters of water. Um, it said warm water, so I got this out of the warm half of the sink. Pull my syringe up. Turn it around, and now I have... Oh, there's a little air bubble in there. Oh. I have five milliliters of water. I'll put that in to my beaker. And two spoonfuls, two scoops, of which is one cc so we need two cc's of our magical magical crystal powder magical crystal powder what is it really called yes it's probably also patent pending hmm. we'll put that in is it premium it does not say premium it's just magic i don't know which would be better magic or premium um so we need to stir it up we want most of the crystals dissolved. You can make your own crystals if you don't have magic crystal powder. I've seen crystal recipes for making it out of borax, laundry stuff, um, mule power or something is the brand name. Three mules. Three mules? I believe so. Uh, or you can make sugar crystals, which are fun because then you can eat them. Um, you can make salt crystals. I remember doing that as a kid, actually, making hard rock candy in the fridge. I think it was just water and sugar mm -hmm. and some food yeah. um, If you remember yesterday when we talked about solutions, what we're making is a saturated solution. So it's a solution that barely holds all of the crystals in there. And you'll see it's not even completely dissolving. You want it as saturated as possible. So as much of your crystal solution, whether it's salt or sugar or magic crystal solution or magic, magic crystal powder as possible. And using warm water, you can usually get a stronger saturated crystal. All right. So we have to assemble our tree. 
This is just blotting paper. It's very absorbent paper. And we're going to pour it into the top of the cup. And let's set this up over here so everybody can see it. How's that? And we'll put our tree in it. And our tree is already starting to suck up some of that saturated solution. And we'll see what happens to it. All right, while we're waiting for that to go, because it's up there with watching paint dry, uh, we'll talk a little bit about minerals. Um, so crystals are the shape that some minerals can take, and some minerals uh, make really pretty crystals, um, like hopefully our tree, and some are, don't really make pretty crystals. And that's one of the, but crystals are just describing the mineral. Minerals make up rocks. So rocks can be combinations of one mineral or multiple minerals, and how they combine um, through the different geologic processes makes different rocks. So what we're talking about today are minerals, which are kind of the ingredients of rocks. So geologists have lots of different ways to identify minerals. Um, some we just might recognize, like diamonds is one that's well known, um, or quartz. Um, so the nicer minerals, the ones that make really pretty crystals, are often used in jewelry. Um, some metals are also minerals, and our bodies even need minerals when we eat things that are fortified with vitamins and minerals. Those macronutrients help our cells be healthy. There's lots and lots. There's like over 2,000 different types of minerals. There's one for every letter of the alphabet, even Y. You know saying, don't eat. We don't eat rocks, because remember, minerals are the ingredients in rocks. So don't go out chewing rocks. So That'll hurt your teeth. So don't go out chewing rocks. No. Not a good idea. No. Um, so we're going to try and identify a couple common minerals um, today. And there's different things that we can look for. Oh, I forgot. I wanted to show you our painting from the other day. This has nothing to do with minerals. Isn't that turned out pretty? Everybody turned out nice. I really like this part. Isn't that pretty where those kind of those mixed together with the different balloon uh, bubbles? Painting by bubbles could be a thing. That was yesterday's video, so check that one out. All right. We are going to identify some different minerals. So I have some different minerals here. Okay. Green one, and a couple clear ones, and a pink one, and kind of a whitish brownish one. And that's the first thing that often we look at when we look at minerals is what color are they? Um, and color can help you identify what the mineral is. It isn't um, the same mineral can come in different colors, however. Um, so we need other properties as well. So, for example, you might have, if your parents buy fancy salt, you might have pink salt. And so this is still salt, but because of other trace elements in it, um, in this case a little bit of iron, it turns pink. Um, and then this is Hawaiian salt, and so it's got this reddish color from all the volcanic activity out there. Some salts are almost, this is from France, it's called Brittany Gray, and it's almost got a greenish color. And then there's even black salt. So this is from Cyprus, called Cyprus Onyx salt. And because of the presence of some charcoal in there, it's got this really black color. So these are rocks that you can eat. You can eat some rocks. But it doesn't mean you can eat every rock. Just like you can eat some plants, but you can't eat every plant. You got to know what it is. You got to identify it. No, let's just not eat. <laughs> um, so color is one thing. Um, another thing that we can test is what color it streaks as. So these are two pieces of ceramic, and that's what you do streak tests on. And that's when you scrape it against a piece of ceramic, what color do you get? Um, so we have a pink rock here. But when we do our streak test, the streak test is just white. And that's why we have two, because if I did the streak test on the white, you don't see anything. So we do our streak test on both. So our pink one, our pink mineral, I just wipe it off with a little bit of water. Kind of like cleaning the blackboard. Our clear uh, mineral, also made of white. Our other clear one, 
Didn't scrape quite as well, but also white. I have to dry that bit off. Our brownish mineral, or white, and our green mineral, white. So even though the minerals are different colors, they're streaking the same color. So let's test our mystery mineral. You see anything? I don't see anything. That's why we need the white one too sometimes. What color is our streak test? It's black. Black. And streak tests are generally black or white, um, despite the many colors that minerals have. We can look at our rocks and think if they are shiny, like these ones are shiny, or if they are dull, not shiny, like um, these minerals. We can look at the shape, if they form really pretty crystals, we can look at the shape of the crystals. So we have two clear minerals here, but they must be different because look at the different shapes that they form. So this one forms a kind of rectangular prism. And this one forms something that has one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So um, something kind of hexagonal in its sides. And so that can tell you the difference, that there's something different about these two minerals. And then another thing that's really common is how hard the minerals are. So we can measure minerals on their hardness scale. And so things, the well-known most uh, hardest mineral is? I'm going to go with a diamond. Diamonds, right? And that's why, you know, diamond tip saws or something will supposedly cut through anything. Um, so they are measured on a level of 10 being the hardest at diamond, down to one, something really soft like talc, which is used in talcum baby powder, um, or from one to 10. And so I know... We're going to start with the softest things, and I don't have any talc, but I do have some gypsum. So this is what this one is gypsum. So gypsum is soft enough that I can scrape it with my fingernail, all right? And I can scrape off bits of it with my fingernail. Now this is called this formation of gypsum is called a gypsum rose, um, which makes us a little like rosette. A little further. Move it in a little bit. Come down. There you go. <laughs> so this is a gypsum rose. So gypsum can be scraped by my fingernail. Um, the next hardest mineral that I have is calcite. And that's what this clear one is. Calcite also has a cool property in that it makes letters double. So if I have some letters here, it doubles them. Sometimes it's called optical calcite. Can they see that? You can, you can see that. Okay. So it's optical, like it, it doubles. It very, very hard to read. Yes. It's like if you needed glasses that made your eyes worse instead of better. That makes everything doubled. If the doctor asked me if that was better or worse, I would say, I would say that it was worse. <laughs> Definitely. So calcite, I cannot scratch with my fingernail. So it is harder than gypsum, but it can be scratched by a copper penny. I don't know if you see that very well. I'll try the cleaner side. There we go. Can we see that little white mark I just made? If you can angle it slightly. There you go. There we go. It's also very shiny. It's got good luster. <laughs> um, so that little mark I made right there with the penny. But my fingernail, I can't scratch. Um, our next hardest mineral is fluorite, and fluorite is so pretty that I wish it wasn't so soft because then you could use it for jewelry, but it's pretty soft. It can't be scratched by my fingernail, and it can't be scratched by the penny, but it can be scratched by a knife. Um, so our box cutter from the other day. Can scratch it. So let me see. We'll, we'll angle things again. Yeah, so those marks right there. But if I took the penny, I don't know if you can even, if you can see this, but the penny is softer. So instead of 
scratching the fluorite, the fluorite scratched the penny, and that's why you can see there's a little bit of brown there. A little bit of brown. Yeah, I can barely see it, and I'm looking at it really close. Um, so that can only be scratched by them. And my fingernail, like, I could file my fingernails on this, you know. It's, my fingernails are definitely softer. Our next hardest thing is this pink one, which is called feldspar. And feldspar can be scratched by a steel nail or a file. So... Yeah. Some white marks there. That's where I just scratched it. Okay. So some white marks. But the it will not be scratched by the knife. It makes noise, um, but it's not being scratched. So and the penny doesn't do anything. My fingernail doesn't do anything. And so we are measuring our things on hardness. Calcite, uh, I'm sorry, this, is, this last one is quartz, See, those clear ones get mixy, um, is quartz, and it won't be scratched by anything. It won't be scratched by my fingernail, it won't be scratched by a penny, it won't be scratched by a knife, I can't even scratch it with this nail, um, because this one has a hardness of seven. So the only thing that are going to scratch this are some of the nicer gemstones, so sapphires and diamonds. Um, but John has requested that I don't use my ring in any science experiments. Um, so I'm not going to take this sapphire. Um, I don't want it to fall out of its setting. Quartz is an interesting one because they actually use it in watches a lot for that very reason, because it does not scratch very easily. Yeah. Um, and it's a pretty common mineral, so it's not as expensive as diamonds. You could make diamond watch faces, okay. but then nobody would have any watches. I'm pretty sure they actually do. <laughs> much more expensive than I would say. Um, I think modern, like this Fitbit, doesn't have a quartz. Uh, it's some kind of glass. I think they actually make it out of sapphire now. Mm. Really... Well, it's not. It's it not a real sapphire. It's sapphire, but I believe it's you know it's a, it's a mix. It's a mix. It has some, <laughs> some, some so it's some kind of rock. Yeah. So sapphire is a number nine. Almost as hard as diamonds at a number 10. Definitely harder than quartz, um, but how hard you want your mineral depends on what you're going to use your mineral for. Um, and there's lots of other properties that make some minerals better than others. Some minerals we like because they're pretty, some because they're useful. Um, and there's over 2,000 of them, so there's a mineral for every situation. That's a lot. I'm going to close this first so I don't cut it. Um, so we need to test. Oh, okay. we need to test our mystery rock, and to see how hard it is. Um, so first, I test with my fingernail. I got nothing. And then we can test with the penny. And I see copper on this, so it's definitely harder than the penny. Mm -hmm. Bit off. Um, next was the knife. So let's see if we can scratch it with the knife. Mm, nope, I can't scratch it with the knife. So it's harder than fluorite. Next was the nail. I can almost scratch it. Yep, I can scratch it with the nail. So it is the same hardness as feldspar. Um, so it's somewhere between fluorite and feldspar. So it's probably about a five, the same as the mineral apatite, which is like a kind of a funny name. Um, I don't think it is apatite because this picture of apatite has a light, has a brownish reddish rock um, mineral and ours is black. But it's the same hardness. So a hardness of five um, is some more data. So it had, it's a black mineral. It has a black streak. Its luster is kind of dull. And its hardness is five. So that's four things we already know about this mineral. Let's move our tools out of the way. Check in on our crystal. We have little tiny crystals right here. 
right on the tips they're starting to form. It says it takes 15 minutes to three hours. Um, I will not be here three hours, but I'll make sure to take a picture and we can check in on it tomorrow as well. Move our, our hardness rocks out of the way. And the next thing we can talk about is the density. So density is a formula that talks about how big something is and how heavy something is. So I could have two things that are the same size. I could have a bowling ball and a balloon that are the same size. I could have a bowling ball that was about this size, but the bowling ball is going to feel a lot heavier and it's a lot denser even though for the same size. It has a lot more weight for the same volume. So density is a formula that it talks about its weight or how big it is. Right. John, yes. do you know what's heavier, a pound of rocks or a pound of feathers? Uh, I do know the answer. Uh, they are exactly the same. They are exactly the same. So we don't just talk about weight, we talk about density as well. And the rocks are much more dense than the feathers for the same volume. Um, so to measure density, to figure out volume, we can actually use some liquid. So I am going to start with this. Looks like it's already pretty good. It's right at 50, right at 50 milliliters of water. Sorry. All right, and I'm going to put my rock in there. And the rock is going to take up some space and it will move the the rock is going to take some space and so it's going to move that level up so instead of at 50 where are we at now this one's a little confusing because it's got the numbers twice so instead of 50 it's at 60 let's let it settle is it a little under 60 okay well let's say it's at 58 i'll do a little math Where'd my marker go? You have to throw and toss it. Just the marker, not the pen. So we were at we were at fifty, and we were a little under fifty. So let's say fifty-eight. So to find out the difference, fifty-eight minus fifty. Uh, we start with the ones. Eight minus zero is. Five minus five is zero. Or fifty minus fifty when we do the tens is zero. So it is eight, and then the unit on these is milliliters. So we have eight milliliters, this is the abbreviation for milliliters, is our volume. Um, so we'll put it here. Eight milliliters. And then we need to know its mass. Mass is its weight. So we'll get our rock back out. If you don't, you probably don't have one of these at home, but you might have a measure liquid measuring cup, or you can make your own out of a glass jar. Start with maybe a tablespoon of water and make a mark, and then add another tablespoon of water and make a mark, and another, and you can make your own graduated cylinder um to measure the volume all right i dried it off because i don't want that weight of that water interfering now if you have a food scale that works pretty well but since we're at porosity and we have lots of fun science tools we're going to use our balance ah Ooh. so you might i don't know when i was when I was young and went to the pediatrician, the scale looked like this. Um, do they still use that? Still use I don't know if they're getting all tech, all high tech now and have digital things. I've been to a doctor and they used a scale like that. A little bit bigger for human size. <laughs> this would not weigh a human. This one only goes, this measures in grams instead of pounds, um, like we usually do when we do our weight. Um, and it goes up to 610 grams. And I'm pretty sure people weigh more than 610 grams. So the way it works is that with nothing on it, this is kind of freely floating and hovers right around zero. If I put my mystery mineral on it, 
it is heavier than zero grams. It has some weight. Um, so we start by moving the ones over. And it weighs more than 10 grams. So I'll put that one back to the beginning. And then, confusingly, the tens are back here. So it's there's little divots that mark it by 10. So let's see if it weighs 10 grams. It weighs at least 10 grams. See if it weighs 20. Yep. 30. Yep. And so this has stayed at the top. It hasn't moved yet. 40. Oh. So it sinks to the bottom. So 40 is just a little too high. So we're going to put it back at 30. And then we're going to add grams one by one. Until I should do it this way so you can keep an eye on this. Let's see if this moves. Oh. Yeah, there it goes. Yes? Almost there. Not quite. A little bit, a little bit more. And my, oh, that's really close. Yeah? Pretty close right there. Yeah. What are we at? Oh, so we had 30 was our 10s, and then 8 was our 1s. So 38 grams is our unit. Carefully put that back down. 38 grams. So our density is 38 grams divided by 8 milliliters. 38 does not go, uh, 8 does not go evenly into 38. You have some math for me, John? You have a calculator. We could do long division, but I think that's a science lesson for another day. <laughs> so 38 divided by 8 is equal to? 4.75. 4.75. So 4.75 grams per milliliter. So for every one gram, 4.75 grams, um, it takes up one milliliter of water. Um, so this is our density, 4.75. Now rocks use, uh, geologists like to call, to use something called specific gravity, um, but that's just a relation of what you measured it in. We measured ours in water, the specific gravity one, so it's 4.75 divided by one, which is still 4.75. But you can measure um, the volume in different liquids because some minerals are a little trickier. You know what the one rock is that floats? There's one rock that floats. Unless you may, unless you carve a rock into a boat, uh, you know, with a vessel, but just one rock that always floats. It's all science magic. I thought our magic crystal growing experiment is magic. Look at the crystals growing. Uh, the answer is no, I do not. I don't know what that is. This is a type of volcanic rock. It is, it is not very dense. Pretty light for its volume. It's pumice. Oh. Pumice. And it floats. Is that uh, what they sell to use in the shower? Um, it is often used for scrubbing our feet because it's a pretty soft mineral. And when we talked to, uh, like for scrubbing off um, dead skin cells and stuff, you don't want something super hard. Like you wouldn't want to use sandpaper on your feet. That's too hard. Um, so pumice is a pretty soft mineral, so it makes it a good grubby thing. And it floats, so you don't lose it in the bathtub. All right. Um, we, so we did our volume. We did our weight. Um, I think we should try and identify, look at some more minerals and try and identify them. Maybe they'll help us with our mystery minerals. I have some more minerals here. We're going to use what we've learned about minerals. Try and think about what we got here. Can they see all the minerals? Yeah. All right. So our first mystery contestant 
horn blend. One of these is called a mineral called horn blend. Let's see if we can figure out which one it is. So its color is dark green to black. So which of these kind of fall onto the black spectrum? Well, not the gold. Maybe? Blackish? Blackish? No. Mm. It says dark green to black. Maybe. Blackish. And then it says it has white flecks. White flecks. So this one's pretty solid black. Except for the white out that somebody painted on the back. So that one's not. And this one's a pretty solid gray. So we're down to these three. Its texture is kind of rough. This one's pretty smooth, so I don't think it's this one. And it is glassy to pearly and kind of sparkly, and the crystals are clearly visible. Hmm. Hmm. Well, these, let's see if we can, we can get the sparkle on that. See some sparkle? There's definitely some white things. There's definitely some white flecks. What about this one? Does this one have some sparkle? Not as much as the black, but I... Okay, so we're between those two. So horn blood is either this one or this one. So let's go back to the colors. Black with white flecks. Which one had the white flecks? Let's say the dark one. Yeah. So this is the one that's a true black with the white flecks. So this one is horn blend. Oops. Whoops. I lost my paper that said horn blend. There it is. One down. Let's see about the rest of them. Our next one is a dark brown and white. It is smooth, metallic, and brittle, and it looks glassy and metallic and flaky. All right, so a dark brownish white. Well, this is black and this is gray. Mm, Brownish and white, maybe. Brownish with white. Mm -hmm. All right. These ones are really sparkly. Maybe. Well, it's not a flat texture. This one is green. So we're down to these two. One is going to be flaky and breaks easily. I feel like it. Oh, you see that? So this one is mica. Mica is often used in eyeshadow. To add the sparkle. Oh, cool. yeah. The other common ingredient is fish scales. So I hope my eyeshadow has mica in it and not fish scales. Kind of weird to put fish on your eyeballs. It'd be it would be strange. Uh, this next one you might know even before I read the description. Pyrite. Yep. What's pyrite? Uh, also known as fool's gold. Fool's gold. Its color is yellow gold. Um, so pyrite. Not real gold, fool's gold. Sure looks yeah. This one is cool because its crystal formations are little cubes. You can actually get pure pyrite that comes in little cubes. It looks like a little dice. Mm. And apparently when, if you scratch it, like if you were using it for the streak test, mm, it gives a black streak. It smells like fish. Okay. So, despite being gold, it leaves a black streak. And it smells fishy. Do you want to smell it, John? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it mm -hmm. All right. Our next one, graphite. Does that sound familiar? That sounds familiar, yeah. Where do we know graphite from? I believe that is what's used in pencil. Ah, so that might be a hint to one of the characteristics. So it's black or silvery gray. Well, we have two black things left. Which one is silvery gray? Yeah. Um, it feels greasy as its texture because it's so like, smooth. It's your fingers dirty. And it easily, easily leaves a mark when rubbed. So, compared to the other ones. Like, listen how quiet that is. It makes a lovely mark. 
you want to tell the right reason and ready. So it's it's very soft. The hardness makes it easy to write as a pencil. Our next one has a long name, Chalco Pyrite. One of these is Chalco Pyrite. So it is a brassy yellow with purplish or blue tarnishes. It's almost like pyrite, its cousin. It's shiny, it's metallic, and its texture is kind of greeny. Any guesses? I have a guess. Any guess? I think it's going the farthest to the right. Yep. Does it look very... Isn't that pretty? It's like a peacock. Yeah. It comes in these beautiful colors. Chalco pyrite. Very pretty. All right, our next one can come in many different colors, but it's always got bands or stripes. Its texture is very smooth, it's very hard, and its luster is kind of glassy. Any guesses? Yes. Oh, I don't know if you can see with the light coming through it. I have a bright light on the camera, so I can see these bands. It's just beautiful. That's probably too close. Oh, it's very cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is a this is an agate, um, and they you when you get them, they they usually give them to you sliced and polished, so you can see all those beautiful circles, almost like the wings of a tree trunk. Our next one is very popular. It's obsidian. Now, if I said obsidian, you probably already know which one it is. It is black, it is sharp and smooth, it is glossy, and it is a volcanic, it's volcanic glass, pretty much. This is our obsidian. And it breaks like glass, very brittle, but it can also get these very sharp edges. Um, you can use them to make arrowheads. They are, was a, the Incas or the Aztecs used to make a weapon out of them. One of these broken bits of obsidian because it gets very sharp when it breaks, just like glass. Another uh, nickname for it. What's another it's nickname? Popular in uh, pop culture. What? Dragon glass. Dragon glass. It was used to fight the White Walkers. In... <laughs> I'm sure all of our science kids are very familiar with Game of Thrones. <laughs> you might know it's big and good. Um, it is also classified as an igneous rock, which means born of fire. So it's kind of appropriate that it would be associated with dragons. Which means we have our last one. Um, hopefully it matches the description. Olive green to greenish black. Yup. Hard and grainy. Yeah, hard. <laughs> we could get our uh, files out and test the hardness. Luster is kind of pearly and clear to cloudy. And so this is olivine. Oh. Olivine is the same as the gemstone peridot, um, which I think is the birthstone of a month. Uh, not July, that's me. Oh, I thought it was pronounced peridot. peridot. Oh, that's because you took French. I didn't. So perhaps it is peridot. Oh, well, I'm not by any means claiming that is the correct word. Well, if you want to sound fancy, you can say peridot. Um, and if people look at you fun, Funny, and then just say, oh, you probably call it paradox. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we still have our mystery mm. um, mineral to identify. And this is a mineral you can find in New Jersey. Um, we've looked at its hardness and some of its other properties, but the, sometimes minerals have special properties that make them really easy to identify, like our calcite. Remember how it doubled the letters when you look through it? Um, a piece of optical calcite will do that. And this one has a special property that makes it a little easier to identify. Do you know what it is? What is it? I have a magnet here. It's magnetic. And so it has a really easy name to remember. It's magnetite. Magnetite. Magnetite is a naturally occurring um, mineral. It's a naturally occurring magnetic mineral. Um, so the Vikings called it lodestone, and they could use it to make um, early compasses. And we'll talk more about magnets tomorrow. Cool. 
So that covers most of our minerals. The and remember, minerals just are the ingredients that make up many different kinds of rocks. So the rocks you have at home in your rock collection, some of them might just be minerals, and some of them might be minerals formed into different types of rock. If you have granite countertops, granite is a rock, but it is made from different minerals. So when you look at the different crystals formed inside of your countertop, those are different types of minerals. Um, so this black one here has mica in it. Remember the mica that was pretty shiny, had those cool formations? That's what makes the shininess in this sample of granite. And depending on what minerals and how they're mixed together, you get different things. Just like if you have different ingredients in a, uh, when you're cooking, you get different things. So if you are mixing together flour and butter and water, and you mix it the right way, you get pie crust. But if you take that same flour, and, but mix it with milk and vegetable oil and eggs, well, you're not going to get pie crust. You're going to get pancakes. Are the, is the glare too bad on these? Nope. Okay. Good. If you just had flour and water, it wouldn't be a very good pie crust or very good pancakes, but it does make really good bread. And if you had flour and instead of the other ingredients, you put in butter and eggs with some sugar, which makes it different from the pie crust, then you can get cake. Candle. <laughs> Candle sold separately. <laughs> um, so that brings us to the end of our talk on minerals. And we, if you have any further questions about rocks or minerals, you can feel free to email me. If you find any cool rocks or minerals in your collection, the rocks are hard to, uh, but minerals are hard to identify and rocks are hard to identify. So if you don't always know what your rock is, that's okay. You could still learn about it. Um, by thinking about the different properties. What color is it? Is it metallic? Is it magnetic? Um, what is its hardness? Test its hardness um, with those tools that we showed with your penny and your nail and a knife with adult supervision. And see what scratches it. Scr just when you're out for a walk, see if the rocks you find scratch with your fingernail. Um, and so there's a lot we can learn about rocks, even if we don't know exactly its name or what kind it is. We can make up their own names. Start your own classification. Our next lesson is going to be about magnets. And so that will be tomorrow on Friday, November 6th at 3.15 here on WebEx again. If you missed this or if you missed any of our science lessons, they are available on the Middletown Month YouTube channel, which is can be found at www.middletownnj.org slash middletownmonth. Um, also, those in sport person sports challenges are finishing next week are dribble, dish, and swish. It's all basketball challenges. They'll be at the TKCC at, I don't remember the other locations, um, TKCC, MTT? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the locations. Um, John, can you, I have a brochure on to, my, to your left. Maybe, hopefully. Ooh, Next week, Dribble Dish and Swish is at TKCC on Monday. That's the only one I remembered. And then TKCC Park on Wednesday? I was right. No. 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 I don't think that's right. Because we're closed on Wednesday. Well, they're Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday next week. All details can be found on our website, middletownnj.org slash Middletown Day. <laughs> um, if we'll also... I. Personally, I'm also doing a craft program the first week in December that'll be similar to this, only we'll do some interactive craft projects together. And I think that's it for today. John? I believe so. I believe uh, MTT Park is going to be Thursday. Oh, okay. It's 11. <laughs> someone, someone made a little typo on this. Uh, the 11. Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Well, on Monday, we'll be at the TKCC. Other locations to follow, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Wonderful. <laughs> Before we go, can we see the uh, tree? Oh, yes. Our crystal tree. I'll try not to bump it too much. 
as good our crystals. Look at that. It looks like a, a crystal tree. I, sort of. I will leave it out. It's like growing its own ornaments. Yes. Um, I'll leave it out and we'll check it again tomorrow when we play with magnets. Okay. Bye bye.